Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week's 10 days. For today's second video, that will take us, I think, pretty much to the first day of February now, day 10. Uh, so we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ESM ensembles running around a couple of weeks. So have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video, of course, for the next uh, four weeks. That will take us well into the second half of February. So uh, we're moving into the final stages of this winter. We've barely had any winter so far. I know a lot of you are wondering if we're going to get any cold weather and any snow before the end of this winter. And we'll see whether there's any sign of it in the next week to 10 days and beyond very shortly. Just say the Friday forecast has been released. So it's certainly not going to be much in the way of winter weather in the next five days. It's just going to go from uh, generally quiet weather initially to something much more unsettled by the end of the five-day forecast period early next week. So have a look at that. See what's going on. Uh, I thought I'd just talk you through the changes made to the Gazwebby's homepage on YouTube. So this is the Gazwebby's YouTube channel. I've uh, been uh, making a few uh, little alterations uh, to the Gazwebby's YouTube channel uh, homepage. So uh, it should be a little bit easier to find the content now. I've been uh, creating various sections. So we've got a long range section just here for the um, latest spring updates. Another long range section just there for all of the winter updates, beginning with the NEO forecast that we did back last summer, right way through to winter forecast that we issued on the first day of December. Uh, there's the uh, playlist that I created for all of the historic weather videos, so they're easier to find out. I've created another little playlist as well uh, for the Beast from the East back in February 2018. So having a very, very um, mild and pretty snowless winter, really, at the moment. Of course, it might change before the end of the winter, but at the moment, being very mild and snowless, so I thought one or two of you might want to go back and relive some of those uh, videos. I try to uh, do it in an order where it sort of goes from uh, the first sort of hints and discussions about the sun's stratospheric warming that started it all off at the beginning of February right way through to the beast from the east itself and um, finishing in early March when we had the coldest uh, when we had the coldest March and spring day on record on the first day of March. 2018. So it should sort of tell the story in um, a linear fashion. So that could be quite an interesting playlist. Have a look at You can catch up on all of the live streams as well via the uh, YouTube channel homepage and there's other created uh, playlists that we've uh, created as well. So it should all be a little bit easier to find the content. I might do a couple more uh, lists for um, five day and weekend forecasts as well in uh, a week or two's time, something like that perhaps. But it should be a little bit easier now anyway to find uh, some of the content on YouTube rather than having to click the video button and then just go scrolling back through uh, weeks and months worth of videos to try and find the one that you want. Of course, we can't list every single video uh, like that that we create. So um, there will be videos that you have to scroll back and try and find them if you want to look at them again. But it, hopefully some of the videos will be easier to find out as well. And talking to YouTube, a poll is still open on the YouTube channel. So uh, we asked at the weekend whether uh, people thought we would see a a second half, a cold second half to uh, winter. The question is, will the second half winter 2019, 2020 see some cold and snowy weather? Still open, so you can still vote in this if you want. At the moment, um, no has gone into the lead. No, we won't see any cold and snowy weather. So it, it was very tight over the weekend to the beginning of the week. But I think as time's going on, more and more of you are having your doubts about this. So uh, uh, currently, uh, we've got, uh, yes, we will see some cold winter weather before the end of winter on 41%. And no, we won't see any cold and winter weather um, in the lead on 45% with 13% unsure. Uh, so if you would like to vote in that, then you just need to go through to the community uh, page via the community tab, uh, which you can get to from the um, YouTube channel homepage just there. Click community, update to the poll, and you can vote in that if you would like to do so. So, uh, yeah, big thank you to everyone for taking part in the poll so far. And uh, we'll probably um, close that in a couple of days' time. Uh, but at the moment, it looks like a majority of Gazworthy's viewers are saying that they don't think we're going to have any cold and snowy weather uh, before the end of this winter, which, of course, is the 28th of February, meteorologically speaking. 
Right, so moving on with the video then. This is how the Central England temperature is currently looking updated, provisional to yesterday at Hadley, the 21st of uh, January. We're currently standing at 6.6, .6, which is an anomaly of 3.1 degrees, just over 3 degrees above average. So this exceptionally mild January continues. What we can say now, I think, well and truly, is that the all-time uh, mildest January on record, which is 1916, I think we can say pretty definitively now that that's safe. We are not going to beat 1916. I think this January will finish up somewhere solidly in the six, it may be low sixes, it may be high sixes. I suppose it's just about possible we might scrape to seven, 7.0. But we're not going to get the 7.5 uh, that we had in 1916. So that record is one of the longest standing January, uh, one of the longest standing temperature records within the CT series. It hasn't been beaten, uh, despite all of the very mild winters that we've had recently. That record looks to me like it's pretty much safe now. So January 1916 will remain for another year for mildest January on CT record. This will probably be the mildest January since 2008, though, and if not the mildest January since 2000. And seven, so it certainly has been an exceptionally uh, mild um, month and start 2020, to say the least. And it goes on uh, really over the next couple of weeks if we look at the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for London for the next couple of weeks. I think it tells the story quite well. Red line is 30 year upper air temperature average. So we're above average with the upper air temperatures even now. It's just that we're under high pressure. So it, particularly in the south and the east, it is still quite chilly. But these temperatures will be uh, becoming milder as the week progresses and we go into the weekend. So by the time we get through to the weekend, you know, part of next week, this period just here, we are going to be genuinely quite mild then with temperatures back up into double digits once again. Uh, temperatures through the middle part of next week probably come a bit colder. Uh, and then they lift up again as we go from the end of January through the first week of February. Overall, there's no sign of anything particularly cold coming up. We might just get a little bit of a cold snap sometime around the 28th of January, that period just there. But otherwise, uh, and that's only lasting a day or so, and it's just coming in from a... Uh, from the northwest, if you like, so like a polar maritime type airstream for a couple of days through the middle of next week. But overall, it looks like it's a mild scene for the next couple of weeks, so this very, very mild winter uh, goes on. Precipitation-wise, so again, lots of dry weather coming up until the weekend, and then over the weekend into next week, it gradually starts getting more unsettled once again. So the Atlantic, we talk about this in the 5-day forecast, the Atlantic is back in business by the time we get through to the weekend and next week. Temperature anomalies are above average from the 22nd to the 30th of January. How many times have we said that over the past few uh, weeks? So again, we're above average with the temperature anomaly from the 22nd to the 30th of January. The mild winter goes on. Precipitation anomalies from the 22nd uh, to 30th of January are wetter than average for the north. So for parts of Northern England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, looking a bit wetter than average there. England and Wales still driving average. Again, expect these to carry on trending more unsettled as the week goes on. That's how the GFS 6 o'clock run is looking for Saturday. Low pressures bearing down on us from the Atlantic as high pressure begins to slip away. And so we go into an increasingly unsettled spell of weather through, the, through to the early part of next week, looking quite stormy potentially there on Monday. Then there's that slight colder snap for Tuesday and Wednesday. You see, wind is still westerly, so it's not going to be particularly cold. It's just that the air is sort of originating uh, from, like, the south of Greenland. So the air's originating from here around this area of low pressure. It's got a long sea track, uh, so that's going to modify it quite a lot anyway. But it's what called a polar maritime airstream. It is enough probably to bring some snow showers to parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Maybe wintry showers in towards parts of Northern England and Wales as well around Tuesday. That's the 28th of January. Still in that pretty cold westerly wind as we go through into Wednesday. 
Uh, Thursday, though, um, t- uh, tends uh, to show wind go back in southwest again. So it becomes milder on Thursday through to Friday. Again, very unsettled, low pressure still driving in off the Atlantic. This is the 31st of January. Uh, so Friday, 31st of January, last day of the month, looking mild, wet and windy. Um, that's how we look at day 10, which is Saturday, the 1st of February. I've um, got another push from the southwest. So um does become milder again for the end of next week and into the first weekend of February. That's uh, Sunday, the 2nd of February. We're into a showery and slightly colder west or westerly again there. And so it goes on right way through the XC range with this GFS run at times we're pulling up very mild winds from the southwest, other times we're pulling down cooler winds from the northwest, but it all continues to drive in from the Atlantic. So the westerlies go on and on and on. Uh, seemingly no sign of a break again today. That's how the GM is looking. So once more high pressure cling on by its fingertips as we begin the weekend. But over the weekend, that high pressure gets eroded, broken down. Low pressure sweeps it off the Atlantic. That was particularly stormy at midnight on Tuesday. Severe gales lashing the country and heavy rain with colder air chasing that wet weather in from the Atlantic. Rather cold and showery as we go through to the middle of next week. I mean, in the second half of next week, we start to pull up milder winds from the southwest again as we come to month's end. And that's how we finish up at day 10 on Saturday, the 1st of February. Um, just looking very westerly, perhaps going a little bit cooler from the northwest this time. But it's all still driving in from off the Atlantic. And um, the ECM looks like that. So again, high pressure clings on by its fingertips for Saturday. But by Sunday, well, the end of Saturday, really, but into Sunday, it's gone. And low pressure takes over. And then into next week, increasingly unsettled. Again, could be quite stormy later Monday into Tuesday. That um, story where we get chased away by uh, a colder west northwesterly. Back to southwest winds in the second half of next week, bringing milder air back up for the end of the month. Still unsaid with further rain involved in that. And then that's how we look as we get towards day 10, and we're still in this westerly uh, scenario. So still driving low pressure in the Atlantic and looking unsettled as we move into the final month of the winter of 2019-2020. This absolutely snowless winter so far through most parts of the country. Uh, Saturday 1st of February, no sign of a change, still in the westerly onslaught. Uh, this is the option that's on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which is the first day of February. Uh, so we have 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and operational run looking like this. They have high pressure to the south and they have low pressure to the north and the west. The westerlies continue, so it remains unsettled. And yes, low pressure continues to be driving in from off the Atlantic. Obviously, within those 51 ensemble members, there will be subtle differences. Some of them will have a little bit more emphasis on the ridge to the south, so it be a little bit drier. Some of them will have a little bit more em- emphasis on the low pressure to the north, and so it will be a little bit more unsettled. But averaging it all out looks very westerly as we get through to the first day of February. And in two weeks' time, easy options that we've got. This gets us to the 6th of February. We have 25 members of the ECM Ensemble. So they start to build up some higher pressure from the south. So they're settling things down. It's probably very mild. It actually could be a little bit spring-like. But um, with a ridge building up from the south and southwest, they're going to be slightly drier. 19 keep this Atlantic battering going on with low pressure continuing to drive in from off the Atlantic. That does include the control run as well, the ECM control run. And then seven have high pressure sitting just to the south, southeast. That could be dragging up a long fetch southwesty, so quite spring-like probably, uh, with those um, with those seven ECM ensemble members. It all still looks very westerly as we're coming towards the end of the first week of February. And um, then finally we've got CFSV2, so these are 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period takes us from the 22nd to the 28th of January, and the coming week going to be mostly high pressure dominated, but we've established that by the time we get through to the weekend and the beginning of next week, the high pressure is broken down. So this is sort of a transitional period, really, with this low pressure 
out in the Atlantic, gradually getting more ascendancy as the ridge breaks. But for round three, maybe four days, there will still be a lot of dry weather. Week two is unsettled. It's 29th of June to the 4th of February. High pressure then in the south and the east of Europe. Low pressure out to the northwest and from the Atlantic. Bring the jet stream through. And the westerlies go on, but so do the bands of rain. Week 3 is the 5th to the 11th of February. High pressure then out to the Atlantic, but still to our south southwest. Low pressure is up to the north. Still lots westerly. Maybe a bit cool about week. Winds could be a bit more northwesterly, so slightly more polar maritime influences out of Greenland. But essentially, it's still the westerly situation. Absolutely no sign of any sort of northern blocking to produce genuinely cold and wintry conditions. And then week four is the 12th to the 18th of February, going into the second half of the month. And yes, we still have the high pressure to the south of us. We still have the low pressure up to the north. This westerly winter goes on and on and on. Um, and even up to week four, 12th to the 18th of February, we're still bringing in West Seas. The emphasis that week is a little bit more on the high pressure from the south. So, again, a little bit drier, probably quite spring-like. Um, but all still continuing to move in from off the mighty Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic, and probably in combination with the Pacific, very much showing us that the oceans are king when when it comes particularly to winter weather. They're very important players throughout the whole of the year, but particularly in winter, particularly for Northern Europe, the Atlantic and as well the Pacific Ocean, they are very, very key and important drivers of the weather. And uh, they're showing us who's boss and they're doing their thing, which we could see from the sea surface temperature anomalies when we uh, issued winter forecasts that uh, alarm bells were ringing at that time due to the way the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean sea surface temperature anomalies had set themselves up. Um, there were other factors that possibly pointing us towards something a little bit more seasonable for this winter. But, I mean, the, it looks like the oceans have totally overridden all of those um, other facts. It's not particularly surprising, because as I say, in winter in particular, uh, the oceans are very, very, very key and important drivers. They have so much energy uh, within them, and, um, you know, they really can just totally steamroller over everything and that's exactly what they're doing this uh, this winter i think the pacific and the atlantic are combining to keep us locked into this never-ending sort of uh, atlantic driven and very zonal type winter there will be a pattern change at some point whether that can happen within the winter months itself or whether we'll have to wait until we get into spring at some point this polar vortex which has been incredibly strong at some point this polar vortex will start to run out of steam and then we'll see what pattern starts setting up then that may not happen until into the spring or it could happen early i'll be surprised if it's able to happen within february unless we get some sort of stratospheric warming but i think polar vortex is just so powerful uh this winter that it's probably unlikely that it will run out of steam through February, unless something happens to really, uh, you know, really give it a hammering, and that would be probably via a sudden stratospheric one, which could still occur, because the further on into the winter you get, the more likely it is that you will get it. But if we don't get a sudden stratospheric one in February, then I think this part of vortex is just very difficult to see anything fundamentally changing to weaken it so um we should see anyway there's still time to get some significant cold and wintry weather but obviously time is ticking on for for the winter months let's just hope it's not one of those situations where we have a very mild winter all of the um spring blossom and flowers come out and then the whole thing freezes up some point through march and april which is actually more common than a lot of people uh think it is more likely to snow at easter than it is at christmas after all right that's it for your videos uh for today then uh tomorrow have another week's 10 day video update coming up for you uh tomorrow so come back for that then we'll see whether there's any sign of any changes uh but that's all for now and thanks for watching